Next thing we need to do, now that we have the, the boiler mounted on the, on the frame, is install the, the sight glass, water level glass, tube, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, this is the original part, and as you can see, it's a bit uh, the worse for wear. It has some darkening and paint loss on the back, but none of this will show uh, once it's in the machine. The main, the main thing that we're concerned about is the integrity of this piece. There's a little roughness on one end, which we'll put in the top, but as long as there's no cracks or uh, uh, really bad uh, scratches, paint loss, discoloration. They're, they're generally usable for a long time. Uh, these were uh, the blue stripe uh, went up until 1982. Some 83's have the blue stripe and then they changed to the red stripe. Um, but it's just, you know, surely cosmetics. It, so the main issue that you want to do is I just took a little uh, um, test tube brush, a little cleaning brush, and I clean the inside, no solvent or anything, and you just want to make sure you clean off any of the debris or scale on the inside of that. You don't want to soak this in anything because you'll lose the paint. And so the, the main thing that you want to make sure is that this area is smooth. And so you just feel it with your, your finger, your fingernail, to make sure that there's no bumps and there's no old seal stuck on it. You just want to make sure it's smooth so you get a nice seal. Now, um, there's quite a few iterations of the seal that's used in here. The original call for a EPDM rubber a square seal, and it went in all by itself. And then uh, they changed to a green silicone square seal with a uh, thin brass bearing uh, washer. That bearing washer always gets destroyed when you when you peel it out. When you, if you have to dig it out, it gets all bent. So you try to straighten it, and it, this is, is it, it's really, it's, it, it basically allows the, uh, I need to find the nuts. Basically that little bearing washer is, the theory behind it is that it allows the, the face of this nut to slide uh, on the seal. I find it to not really be that advantageous. It's a very difficult part to uh, to find. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's available as an OEM part uh, from Olympia Express. It's a little bit spendy for what it is, and especially if you don't really need it. Um, we have gone to uh, to silicone O-rings in this part instead of using the square seal. Uh, largely because this particular size that we've spec'd out is so easy to use. The, the square silicone seal is quite tight on, on the sight glass, which is logical. Uh, but it's so tight that it's, it, it's, it makes installing the, the glass tube a little bit difficult. This system, it makes it quite easy that you just pick whichever end you want up or down. As I've said, I feel some a little bit of roughness up here, so I'm going to put this at the top. We want a good seat at the bottom. So basically, it's quite simple with this system, is that I just put these on. You do the whole thing dry, up to a point. You just put these on, slide them on. Let's see. Let me put my glasses on and see if I want that. Yeah, that's the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so we put these on. You take your, and we can set that down in there quite safely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my Dow 111 and I'm going to put on these threads just on one side to make sure they're, they, that they don't freeze and they go in nice and smoothly. That's just for ease of installation of right. those parts. And it also, this is, is in a sense going to take the place of that brass bearing because we want to make sure the face of, the, of these slide quite nicely on here. Now I'm going to take a little tiny bit of it. 
I'm going to put it on the just a little bit on that ring just right inside there and and uh, do that next one later when I get up there now we just come on with this one the simplest thing to do is just set just set this right in here and we so we can see what we're doing we pull this up I don't want to shade it and that just goes you can feel it go down through those little o-rings down into the bottom so there are two in the bottom yeah I'll be real quiet listen to this noise that is the glass hitting the small brass socket down there it goes against the the brass on the bottom okay there's two o-rings down there and in this one we just up it goes and into the socket on top we wiggle it around a little bit we've got some dial 111 on the face all right and we get these started that one started on the bottom I don't have this one started on the top quite yet but we have just physically used this nut to push those two rings up in the socket. Now I've got that one started. It's quite simple doing it this way. Uh, there's now a couple of checks that you make. This, to line up that stripe properly, it's completely visual. You look at the front of it. Now some of these will be, and then you look down in the top. One thing you want to check, here's, this is the water entrance hole here, the water goes back in through this boss. There's that little hole. You want to make sure the top of your glass is below that hole. If your sight glass tube is the proper length and it's seated in the bottom, it's going to come out in the right position. But there's the hole, there's the top of the glass, and this is the other orientation. Basically you're taking a right angle and you're, you're lining the rear stripe at the, in this case it would be the 12 o'clock position in this hole. The beauty of these uh, silicone o-rings is that if you get that crooked you can loosen this up and twist it around to where you want it. And also when you are, when you have the face plate on you can set it up so you either see the stripe from this direction or the stripe from this direction or the stripe straight on. I try to set it on so the stripe is right directly on a, in, in this plane straight to the front. You can always correct it later if you need to. Now that you've determined that you have this all the way down, you've started the nuts, you take that 17 millimeter and those seals, you've got some down 111 down in there, Everything's nice and smooth. You've cleaned all your threads. You've cleaned your socket. This is most simple to do without the faceplate on. It's almost impossible to do with the faceplate on. Now, once again, everything tightens clockwise. If you're working on the boiler side, you just remember that your wrench to tighten goes toward the boiler to loosen it goes away from the boiler. So it's a lot easier to work through the front of the machine since you can. You can use basically any 17 millimeter wrench. The large face wrench works just as well as, as my little custom wrenches that I make. But you tighten this up. Now what we're going to do once once the, the machine has heat cycled, we're going to recheck these, we're going to retighten these. But at this point, basically, you want it to be tight enough so you can't turn that, so you can't, it won't rotate. That's, that's the tightness that we're looking for on this first setup. If, it, if, if you can't move that sight glass, you know, it, it's good and tight. I'll come in here and make sure I've got my top one. This is, is, is a feel. I have never uh, managed to
tighten these up so tight that you break the sight glass. It, 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 sight glasses get broken when you get in with a metal tool and you try to dig out a seal and you get the metal tool against it and you break it. They can also break if there's anything is crooked. If, if somebody has dropped this, if, if these two pieces aren't directly parallel to one another, then uh, it, it can put stress on the, on the sight glass and it can break it. But generally, sight glasses get broken when the seal is extremely impacted. Uh, uh, against the against the glass, and uh, uh, if you twist it uh, uh, crooked when you're taking it out, but generally installation is a real. These seals are nice and soft, and they suck down on it. How's your time, Barb? Ten minutes and fifty-five seconds. Okay, so seconds. we've got time to do this. Now, the um, a lot of the parts that we use, um, some of the parts that we use. Our, our own uh, adaptations and for very good reasons mainly because uh, we do a lot of these machines and we've had um, almost everything imaginable happen when I, I we, we've changed this part a uh, factory parts a copper crush washer a solid copper crush washer that you have one installation of that part that's it uh, I like this Teflon washer that I just basically screw it onto here. As you can see, there's a well around here. There's this machined well around the top. The main problem with using Teflon for a, a hard seal like this is that it can spread. Uh, it can flow. And when, it, when it squashes, it gets bigger. and the nice thing is, is that this well keeps the spreading from happening. So you just get a nice seal. Now, you say, well, why not use the copper? Well, first of all, you really, really have to torque the copper down. Many times you, you put the copper in and you fire up the machine and you've got a leak. And then you have to take a mallet uh, and, and your wrench and you really have to work that thing over. Uh, in this case, with this Teflon in this position, I just take this, even with a short wrench, and basically, if the machine were under pressure right now, it would be sealed. I just go down, no hammer, no twisting the frame, no endangering the breaking this, because you, you, you can pound on this so hard to seal that copper crush washer that you can actually break the sight glass because you've twisted the top in relation to the bottom. But that installation to me is very mellow, uh, kind of, it just, it's sealed. Now, here's another point. If there's any debris down in this bottom channel after you've gone ahead and done the whole thing, you've, you put together your sight glass, you, you put your copper crush washer on there, you fill it up with water, what happened a few weeks ago? Remember um, that? Yes. I was laughing. Yes. I, I filled it up with water, and there was an earwig. It was a bug. It was, it was horrible. A bug. Yeah, there was a bug in there. You know, the, everything is looking beautiful, and here's this. It's it like there's a roach in my... There was not our roach, <laughs> No, but it was, there was a bug out. in there. Now, if I, had, had the, if I had used the copper washer, I would have had to get my hammer, smash it loose, throw the copper washer away, put a new, get the bug out of there, you know, and, and in this case, all I had to do was take, you know, this, this is, you can use this over and over, all I had to do was unscrew this, dump out the bug, rinse it, rinse it, put it, it sounds like man in black, it's, it's the bug, you know. Oh, it was anyway. awful. Yeah, but then that's sealed. After we uh, heat cycle this, we're going to go through and tighten everything up, uh, uh, up again, but I do like this uh, this part here in this position. Now I think that's we basically we have one thing to do before we uh, put the face plate on and the rest of the components. We're almost done with this. Uh, what's the time there, Barb? Fourteen forty. Okay, I'll be back and we're going to hook up the electrical and 